Hey, Density Friends, this is Paul Dr. Nacho. And what I'd like to talk about is, will your associate position turn into a frog? Will your associate position turn into a frog? Having two monitors at the house, we watch a lot of princess movies. And when we, one is actually a frog and the prince. So will the associate position you're looking at turn into a frog? And the best way to prevent this from happening is to ask great questions during the interview process along the way. Manage your own expectations. And here's the key. Don't become too emotionally invested in a position until you've asked other people about it, like a dental focused attorney, like people who are not emotionally invested in your life. Because I want to tell you a story about a dentist whose associate position turned into a frog. And this dentist is awesome. She is my friend. She is somebody who did the training at the residency program where I teach and all year long we talked about red flags for finding a job problems along the way what you could identify early in the process to not take a position and we had gone over this over and over during lectures and this associate who was very motivated this resident had found the position and she came to me and said hey Paul what do you think of this position? But when she came to me, she had that face on, that you guys know this face, where she didn't want me to say anything bad about it. It was like, hey, I'd like to take this job. It's really great. What do you think of it? So now it's hard for me to give honest feedback. Well, it's hard for some people, but it's not hard for me because one of the things I talk about is I like to kindly annoy people into good decisions. Being a good friend is the willingness to annoy someone into a good decision. I will give you an example. I'm here at Rittenhouse Square Parks. During the pandemic, parks are still legal to go to. Over there is a restaurant called Park, one of the best ones in Philadelphia, one of the most popular. And sometimes people show up like they're going to a restaurant, maybe let's call it their grandmother's brunch, and they're wearing an outfit that looks like they're going to a club in Las Vegas. And they say to their friend, is this a good outfit for my grandmother's brunch? And they already have the outfit on. Now that friend can do one of two things. That friend could not be a good friend and just care more about not annoying him or herself and say, ah, it looks good knowing full well when they get to their grandmother's brunch people are going to think that outfit is totally inappropriate to wear on a Sunday at 10 a.m. or if you are a good friend uh, someone like me who kindly annoys people who cares about themselves second I would say hey that outfit looks great but perhaps it's not the right fit for a Sunday brunch for your grandmother and oh yeah didn't you tell me like four or five of your grandmother's friends were going maybe a different outfit would be a better choice and then that's that's me being a good friend and saying this outfit probably won't work out for your grandmother's brunch. So back to my story with my uh, resident who trusted my opinion. So I said to her, you know, when you have a relationship with people, you can give some tough love, but first you have to have love first. So you can't, th this is just a, a side note on Facebook interaction, online interaction. When someone posts a case or idea and you say things like, that is a stupid idea or that's not a good case, it doesn't work if you don't know the person that comes off as incredibly rude or mean. But in real life, when you have relationships with people sometimes you can cut through that and you can give your honest opinion so in giving your honest opinion of a position you can say things like this is not going to work out from everything you've told me about your goals and what we've talked about here